Uh, what I think we need to keep in mind is that there is no one thing I'm talking about that proves anything. It's the preponderance of evidence, okay? It's looking at everything. If there were just one footprint, if there were just one example of anything I'm giving you, then you could say, well, that's kind of stretching it, or maybe it was fake or whatever. But there are so many of the things that I'm showing you. And I, again, am just touching the tip of the iceberg. I want to talk to you about the camera. This is supposedly an out of place artifact. What I'm saying is that it's not out of place. This hammer was found by a little lady named Emma Pond in 1934. This was found in an area uh, called the Lano Uplift, which is out in London, Texas, in the central part of Texas. Uh, you may come up and look at this. This is not, of course, the real hammer. You can't, no one's going to see the real hammer now. You know, it's locked up. Um, this hammer was found in rock dated 400 million years ago, okay? That's a long, long time ago. And the seashells and stuff that was around the hammer was dated at 500 million years. This is all by evolutionary dating. They, they dated it. Then they took this hammer and they brought it to Battelle Labs in Columbus, Ohio, the same lab that uh, examined the moon rocks. And when they brought it to Battelle Labs, uh, it was very curious. The hammer has two workable ends. This is iron. This is the wooden half. And part of it is coalified. So you've got this hammer. The rock around it accreted or formed around the hammer. There is absolutely no doubt about that. The rock, the hammer was there first. Then the sedimentary rock came around it and it created around the hammer. You did not have any evidence of this hammer having been put there after the fact. Okay? So Battelle Labs examined this and they took a part of the hammer, a line, a straight, and analyzed it. The analysis of the hammer came out that it was composed of 96.6% iron, 2.6% chlorine, and 0.74% sulfur. 2.6%, there was no nickel, there was no carbon, no silicon. Now, silicon's um, something that gets into our process now that we really don't want, which is contaminant more or less. Carbon is carbon steel. You've heard of high carbon steel. No carbon in this hammer. No nickel. Nickel is um, in meteorites. So this wasn't made by some outer space person with meteorite metals or something. It was common metal to our time. But chlorine is a gas. And right now, today, as I speak, they cannot make a solid object putting together chlorine and iron. Can't do it. They have not. This is a metallurgy that's beyond the 21st century. Okay? Uh, and this was done by Patel Labs. And there's no doubt that this hammer is sitting down there and rock <coughs> dated between 400 and 500 million years ago. And there wasn't supposed to be anything but a few trilobites and stuff of this nature. This rock was embarrassing in some other respects, too. The, I mean, the hammer. The hammer was fairly firm. It was hard. Well, it had to be. If the evolutionists thought it lasted that long, or well, couldn't have. But think of it as a creationist. We're looking at something from the antediluvian world. You're looking at a hammer from the antediluvian world. Did they have, when Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. He wasn't just saying that because he was kind of, oh, I, you know, he opened the refrigerator and he couldn't find anything different to eat. See, Solomon meant that. The most brilliant man examining everything said, everything I think of, everything I see, everything I go back and study and look at has already been thought of, looked at, seen before. 
It's a weariness of the flesh to do all this studying because there's nothing new under the sun. When Battelle Labs took this hammer and took the scrape off of it to analyze it, they came back a couple years later and they noticed that it had not rusted, okay? Only like in a tiny little couple spots, but I mean, essentially no rust. So they looked for rust and found just a little bit of rust. And they said, we're gonna analyze it. So they analyzed the rust. Rust comes in three forms. Two irons, three oxygens, three irons, four oxygens, or an iron and an oxygen. That's three forms of rust. As the oxygen meets the iron, then there's, there's the rust that forms. They analyzed and it wasn't Fe2O3. That's a real common rust that we have now. You'll see some of that even on your parents. <laughs> Fe3O4, okay? There's a very common rust. It wasn't Fe3O4. It was FeO, okay? Tell Lab said this rust is from, is this iron oxide. Now, iron oxide is formed as rust under two types of environmental changes. Number one, it has to be under at least two atmospheres of pressure. Number two, it has to be in an environment void of ultraviolet radiation. Okay, does that sound familiar? Yeah, you know, we know because you get the big, big oil derricks where you run down hundreds of feet and you build these things. The iron down there will rust because you get it down lower far enough you have no ultraviolet radiation penetrating into the water and you actually have this kind of a rust. But here's a hammer being used on the surface of the earth that looks very antediluvian according to 